There's a good one. Just launched. What's up, guys? Good morning. It is uh, 7 o'clock on the dot. Thursday, April 30th. Devin and I are getting out for some hopeful top water. The pond is steamy. It looks so cool, man. And uh, anyways, we're dropping in both kayaks. Should be a bunch of fun. Let's go and try and get on some top water fish. If not, we brought everything else. Of course, the whole arsenal. Let's see what we can't link into. Guys, on my frogs, I leave a couple knots on there and I always push them down to the very bottom. And uh, I've heard that's supposed to actually help so sometimes your line will get caught on the bottom and when you're popping it or walking it, it'll dip that nose down. So by leaving a couple knots on there, your line's gonna stay up higher. You can get that walk or you can get that pop just straight along without dipping that nose down. Quick little frog tip. First few casts out here, guys. This is amazing looking. <laughs> Got a fish. Got him. No, he came off. What are you throwing? Texas ring? Definitely got one. Back to back cast. I gotta go over there. Slow and steady, I think, is what's gonna get him today. Oh! Got one on the lunker log. Oh! Sweet. A nice one. Guys, there we go. All right. Whew, first catch of the morning. Oh, wow, weightless lunker log, you guys. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. All right, I'm feeling okay now. <laughs> Slow and steady. We switched up from the top water pretty quick. That didn't work out very well. <laughs> Zero bites on the frog or two ploppers in various sizes and colors. I don't throw the lunker log that much. There we go. Let's get a quick weight on this guy just because he's the first one of the morning. It tipped the scales. Look at that, 302, that is on the dot. Three pounder to start my morning on the lunker log. It's gonna be a slow day of fishing, I can already tell. They're just liking the bottom baits, moving it real slow now. We'll see, buds. Whoa, hey, watermelon red flake color, by the way. There's a good one. There we go. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, he's got some fight. All right, let's get this thing in the boat. Oh, that one's bigger. That one's even bigger. Come on, get in here. That's a good one, you guys. Wow, that's a tanker right there. That is much better. Holy smokes. Up in the size department right there. There we go, guys. Minutes later, look at this thing. I'm trying to keep it down because this is a calm little spot. Let's get a weight on this thing. That is a nice catch on the watermelon red flake lunker log right there. Where's that scale? Oh, no, 3.99, that's what I get for the last one being two points over. Literally 3.99. That's what I call a four pounder right there. <laughs> 3.99, are you kidding me? <laughs> Someone at Rapala does not like me with that scale. All right, let's get this four pounder back in the water, guys. This is nuts. Oh, little guy. No, he was swimming with it for a while. He came from over to the left. We traded in the four pounder. Let's let this little guy go. We need some old giants. Oh, little guy. <laughs> Feisty little guy. They are after this lunker log this morning. Let me backtrack to my shady spot and then I'll tell you guys why we're throwing what we're throwing. A little bit different on the energy of today's video because the thing is we gotta be cool, calm, and collected. Here's the deal. Opening up the Bass Forecast app, it says that today is a 2.5 rating. And we're in the prime time, the prime bite. <laughs> so these fish are not going to be just chasing everything most likely. You're going to have to figure out what bait they like. You're going to dial it in, and you just want to keep fishing it. Just take the GoPro off. So with this mucky grass, 
this stuff getting caked on everything you throw, you really don't want to do much with the weight. Otherwise, you know, a Texas rig with the weight would be fine, but you just dig right into that stuff and it comes up on your worm, your craw, your creature, whatever you're throwing. And so you're really limiting your potential for getting bites because your bait's going to be covered in grass. What we've done is gone weightless Texas rig, a uh, wacky rig would work just the same. That uh, light Sanko, that worm just kind of falls. It kind of waves its way down parallel and it might land on top of that grass but there's not enough weight to push it down in it so those fish can still see it and eat it just when it's sitting you work this bait very slow you want to keep your line very tight because if you have a little slack in your line you won't feel those bites and it's the subtle hits sometimes on these worms they might just pick it up and kind of they might just kind of hang out there they might just gobble it and kind of hang out so you got to make sure you keep your line tight you want to feel those little ticks in this case they've also been kind of swimming away with it this morning so what's happening is when i see that line move or i feel a little weight I just kind of tilt that rod up a little bit, make sure I've got that bite, and then I'm gonna go for that hook set and you wanna make it powerful. I'm making long casts. You wanna really drive that hook home. We're using a bigger, a four or five aught hook. So it's a thicker wire than some of those smaller finesse hooks. So to get that through the lip, penetrate, you really wanna get a good hook set. That's gonna make sure you land these fish. So I'm gonna go ahead and get back in the water, but just a slower pace way of fishing this morning. Weightless Texas rig, a six inch worm, we could drop down to a five inch, but this one's getting hits by the big guys and the little guys. I'm throwing watermelon red flake. Devin is throwing either uh, cinnamon or black and blue. She's got a couple colors over there. So let's go ahead and get some more. I think this uh, longer log has seen five fish now. So what I'm doing is taking it down just a little bit more because it is getting so torn up. I'll just tear it off another little quarter inch here. Now we're down to about roughly a five inch longer log. What we're going to do here is feed that hook back through just the nose take that up Texas rig it and so now what's really messed up is up here higher but but the hooks gonna go through lower so I'm, I'm dealing with a good part of the Sanko to really lock that hook in so now even though this worm was pretty janky just a second ago the part that's really fragile is a little bit higher and so now it's gonna sit just perfect this is gonna sink nice and slow even slower than it did when I had a little bit more weight from that extra inch on there slow and steady wins the race today they seem to all be hanging out uh, not necessarily in the grass and if they are we're not really casting there but about five feet away from it or so so I'm just kind of casting along that edge um, there's definitely some bluegill I think spawning in this spot right now or, or they're getting close there's just a ton of bluegill oh, I might have a bite okay never mind there's a lot of bluegill up shallow probably in the cover of all this grass so these bass are probably just lurking either sitting stationary or cruising and roaming and so they'll come across this worm I'm throwing but they're ready to ambush those bluegill as well. We're choosing not to throw some moving baits just because this team's, uh, this is working right now, so. Got him. Got him. What are we talking about? Oh, he's okay, I think. I think he's all right. Oh God, he might actually be good. Ugh. Okay, he's just got some fight. I don't think he's too big. Oh, he's all right. Oh, he's all right. He's another four pounder. Another four pounder. Come here, bud. Oh, this one might be bigger. Okay. Wow, look at that tail too. Holy smokes, guys, this one's bigger. I think this one is bigger. Whoo! That will do. That is a fatty right there. Holy smokes. Stepping up the game, dudes. What is going on out here? There we go. Got him free. I'm going to give him a breather because I don't want him to be out of the water too long. Let's see what this thing weighs. That one's bigger than four. Yep. Yep. That's a four and a half right there. Heck yes. I'm just letting this fish breathe for a second here. This scripper scale is so sweet. He could probably get away. He's a he's a feisty little guy, but uh oh yeah, he's he's thrashing. Yep. Very excited on this catch. We've been putting him back in the water as we've uh weighed him. Weightless lunker log doing work today in this little back pocket. You ready kid? You're kicking. We'll see ya. 
that was cool. Didn't know how big it was at first. I was kind of downplaying it, I think. And then it took me under the yak, and I was like, oh! <laughs> Guys, we're going to switch it up. Kind of similar to the trench hog, right? As far as length, it's about the same, but this has got some fresh scent on it. A color that stands out just a little bit more. And a couple of appendages to just kind of flop around weightless. That might get more attention. I'm going to see if I am correct. The slunker log is still... I'm going to still use it if I don't get any hits on this trench hog, because that thing is holding up. And this is the Bama bug. It's almost like a purple on top with a little green or turquoise flash. And then more of like a natural just green on the bottom. With it being weightless, it's going to drop really slowly. These appendages are probably going to be fluttering a lot. And even when this sits in the grass on the bottom, it'll probably flutter a little bit. A little bit more movement, a little bit more standout color. They'll either like it or they won't. We'll see. Someone's got it. <sighs> Just a weight, weightless trench hog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's time to retie now. This line's getting pretty frayed. <laughs> I've been checking it. It's almost like it just came out of nowhere. It's been feeling really good, but uh, you'll jeopardize losing a big fish if your line is messed up, essentially, from the bass's teeth over time, just as they thrash and you've got them on the hook and running up against cover trees. and Well, I don't know how much wood I've been hitting. Probably zero. So I don't know why I bring that up. Probably because you might be hitting them in your ponds, but I need to retie. So I'm just going to cut a little bit of line tie another knot onto this hook, get re-rigged, get back in there using this cleaner line. Once you start to feel that, ooh, that scratchiness right there, yeah, you want to get rid of that. Well, guys, we haven't had a bite in like 45 minutes. It totally died off. We threw uh, a lot of different baits, actually, towards the end. I tossed out the swim bait, the frog. Devin threw the chatter bait. I, I, I threw out the frog just because I figured maybe they'd be kind of getting back deeper into that grass now that it's warmed up a little bit guess i'm wrong been tough we've been throwing uh weightless um different plastics devin's got a crawl i was throwing the trench hog we're still kept throwing the lunker log anyways we are going to wrap things up at 9 30 in the morning that is a different pace for us but what an awesome morning i think now only thing we need now is maybe some coffee and kolaches sounds good right coffee and kolaches let's go Just like that, we made it back on land, you guys. Whew. Best day of decent fish in a little while, man. Three, four, four and a half. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Devin and I are about to go get some breakfast, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Oh, that was tough. Yeah, you didn't, you, you had like, what'd you get? Oh, no, I got one, like, pound and a half. Weston outfished me hardcore today, this morning. <laughs> but it's about time, because, yeah, it's been the other way around for a bit, so. I get to keep the channel. <gasps>